You like sushi? <laughs> Have all of you tasted it? Here's a piece of sushi for you. This is called hand-pressed sushi or nigiri sushi. And it's a piece of rice, hand-formed rice, and on top of that there's, in this case, some raw salmon. And if I ask you, what does the rice taste of? You may say, well, it's sort of sweet, which is correct, because there's some starch in it and some sugars. And then if I ask you again, what else does it taste from? You may remember it tastes actually a little bit salty. It also tastes sour. And uh, you would ask yourself, how come that rice should taste salt and sour? And this is uh, my first curious question, why does it taste like that? And that's, of course, the chef has made it sour and salt, but why? It actually reflects on an ancient quote, which is um, my story first, where, what is sushi? And because the history of sushi is really the history of preservation of food. And we tend to forget nowadays where we can fly food from one end of the world to the other, and we have freezers and refrigerators, we have all sorts of fancy techniques to keep the food stuff fresh throughout the day, throughout the seasons. We can transport from one coast to the other coast, but that didn't used to be like that. And throughout uh, Asia, in particular in China and later in Japan, people discovered that you can ferment fish, that is, you can preserve fish, by taking fresh fish and put it in layers of cooked rice. So basically, you had a big barrel, you cooked rice and put a layer of rice, and put a layer of of fish and a layer of rice and so on, and, and a, a lid on the top and a big stone, and you will press this thing down. And what will happen? Well, you know what's going to happen. You get spontaneous fermentation because you have lactic bacteria in the environment. It started, starts fermenting the fish, and after some time it doesn't smell very good, but the rice nurtures the, the, uh, the bacteria, and after some time the fish changes texture, it changes um, uh, taste, changes odor, but it's still edible and it's nutritious. And maybe after half a year, you could then pull out the fish and eat the fish. That is the original sushi. And in those days, of course, you didn't eat the, eat the rice. It was just to be thrown out. So the history of sushi is really, up to nowadays, it's sort of a shortening of fermentation times until now where we basically don't ferment the fish, we eat it raw. Now there's another old code Look at the sizes. There's sizes that are bites. You can eat, you're not supposed to, to uh, cut them in two. You put them in the mouth and eat them in one go. And that actually reflects on the fact that sushi used to be fast food. It's something you ate in the street, just like as you go to have a, grab a, a burger or a sausage or a sandwich in the street. And this is the way it would look in the old Edo, in, 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 in the old Tokyo. Uh, in the streets before the big, big earthquake, you have these kiosks outside and the sushi chef would stand there and make the sushi and the, and the busy town people, they would rush by and get the sushi and eat it by the fingers.